This program has been sponsored in part by friends and partners of Reap Now Media Ministries. What is God doing in my life? Why can't I feel God? Where's God at? I'm going to tell you where God is. God is standing in time, waiting on you to get in time with his plan so that all things can work together for good. But if you're over here frolicking around with the world, you'll miss the appointment of God. You'll never know the specific moment or the power or the glory or the victory or the purpose of your life because you'll never find it out of his time. Grab your Bibles today, if you will. I want to get into the Word of the Lord. God has been stirring a word in my spirit, and, and um, God just simply gave me the title and then began to unfold the Word as He began to reveal His heart to me for this church and for this hour. He said these words to me, it is about time. It is about time. Look at your neighbor and say, it's about time. Now, some of y'all looking at your neighbor and saying, it's about time. That ain't what I said. It's about time. It's about time. Everybody say time. Time is something that no matter who you are, you cannot give it away and you cannot give it back or get it back. Your time that you've been allotted in your life is a specified time. It is a determined time. God is the orchestrator of your life. Can I get an amen? I want you to go to the book of Galatians chapter 4, if you will. Galatians chapter 4. Knowing God is wanting us to understand the significance of the time that we're living in is important. Of the times and of the seasons. But today I want to deal with more of the chronos, the momentary time allotment that you have and less about the end times as an event or a series of events. God is very serious about what you're doing with your life. So I want to look at Galatians chapter 4 as we dive into the word of the Lord today. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship in the fullness of time. Father, today I ask you to hide me behind the cross and to allow me, God, to vanish for the next while from the eyes of the hearer, but may they see Christ and hear the word of God. Father God, I pray that you would turn this word loose inside of us and alive within us that we might declare the oracles of God. I pray that you would help me to preach without fear or without favor. And Lord, that you would allow me to say nothing more than you would have me to say. But God, I pray that whatever I say, I would say with the spirit of humility, with a humble heart and a broken and a contrite spirit. And may the people of God hear the word of the Lord as it comes forth, God, with a brokenness. And may they understand, God, that you are dealing with us about the time that we are living in and what we're doing with our time. Anoint the word of God, we pray. Help us, Lord, to preach it with declaration and with authority. In Christ's name we ask. And the church said amen and amen. I believe that God has a set time in your life where everything is positioned, orchestrated, and designed by Almighty God. I do not believe in accidents or happenstance. Can I get a witness today? There are those that say, well, I guess you were in the right place at the right time. You are always in the right place at the right time if you're following the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? I felt God begin to stir in my heart the need for us to recognize the moments of our life. The seasons, yes, are important. The years are important, but the older I get, the faster 
the seasons go and the quicker the, the years go by. Can I get an amen? But if I can lock in on the moments of my life, I could value the minute that I'm living in. I believe that my life begins to take on new meaning. Can I get a witness today? So he wants you to understand today that there is a perfect timing that God has positioned you in. I want you to listen to me very closely because this morning I want you to understand you are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are not an error. You were divinely appointed for this time, for this hour, for this place, for this purpose. A couple of weeks ago, I shared with you the events of our trip to, uh, to, uh, to the mountains of Colorado and the, uh, the accident that I witnessed as I watched a lady taking her final breaths and her heart stopped beating. And I understood in that moment that God had positioned me at that stoplight at that specific moment of time, knowing that the man was coming to run the light, knowing that things were going to radically change and lives were going to be cast, cast into eternity. He devoured divinely positioned me for that moment. Now that's weighed heavy on my heart because I fear that there have been many times that I miss the moment that God has positioned me in because I'm too upset by the way things are going at the time. Nothing's working out right. The car didn't start on the first turn. Everything is slowed down. Everything is messed up. My schedule is off. Anybody here today that you operate by schedule, wave at me. You've got everything spelled out exactly at the right time. Your coffee pot goes off every morning at an exact time. You pour your cream at the right time. Everything is exact and everything is specific. God is saying to you today to understand something. If you think that you are detail oriented, you got that from your heavenly father. God is a God of detail and a God of perfect timing. He makes no mistake. Can I get an amen? And in the orchestration of time, God divinely positions you and I in the places where we are, in the space where we are and in the in the moment that we are living in. So God is saying to you today to, that it is about time. There's some of you right now that you're so busy rushing through your life that you are missing the moment that you are living in today. You're missing the beauty in the eyes of your children. You're missing the love of your spouse because you're too busy rushing around to miss and to understand the moment that God has placed you in. There is so much to be said about God's perfect timing. He who knows the end from the beginning knows exactly where you are right now. He knows what struggles you're dealing with, what your struggles, what your battle, what your fight, what your concerns are. He knew them before you got out of bed, but better than that, he knew them before your mother and father conceived you. He knew you from the beginning of your life. For the Bible says in Isaiah that, he, that God stands in the beginning, but he calls it all from the end. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Can I read this text to you today? Can I show you what God wants you to understand? Here's what he said. I stand Stand there, and I remember the former things of old, for I am God. There is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all of my pleasure. So God, who is almighty and eternal, stood at the end of time and unrolled eternity past. He put it all back into place before everything that has happened to bring you to this moment ever happened. God was standing at the end saying this is the way. Walk ye in it. Can I tell you right now, God knows your future. God knows what brought you where you are. He knows where you've been. He knows what you've been through and it's his grace that has sustained you. It's about time. It's about a God who knows every momentary crisis of your life. It is a God who walked with you when you felt like nobody was there. The times of your life when you felt isolated and alone. The times in your life where you felt like a failure and you felt like nobody could ever love you in the moment that that time, space, that capsule of time, God brought you there. Most of us don't realize that. We think that we're orchestrating our own walk. Let me show you something. Brother Steve, come up here if you will. In the book of James, James gives us a tremendous word. He said, do not say tomorrow we will go here and we will do this and we will do that. 
but say, if the Lord will. See, because God's time is tied to God's will. You can be out of time. You can be out of the will of God. Don't, mis don't misunderstand me. You can be doing a lot of good things and miss the will of God for your life. God wants to order your steps. So sometimes we're walking down the road with God, and sometimes that leg wants to go this way. And God says, uh-uh, back here. Why? Because the time that he is leading you to is a point that you will never get to by yourself. But as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So it is imperative that you walk step and step, step by step, step by step in time with God. Will God order your steps? He has ordered them. He is not in the, in the eternal, eternal past telling you where to go. He is walking with you in the moment that you're in because it's about time. How many have ever had a moment in your life where it seemed like it was a bad day? Yes, sir. But somewhere, somehow, along the way, something good came out of it. Why? Because you got out of your plan and you got in his plan and you quit walking in your timing and you started operating in his timing. Every one of you that served in the military, you didn't get up in the morning and just take off marching. You marched in step. You marched in time. You don't get to be a master sergeant or a drill sergeant because you just joined the service. You've got to go through boot camp. You've got to walk through the fight sometime because you cannot lead others in the march if you can't get your step in time. Tell your neighbors about time. It's about time. There are many times we ask God to lead us, but we've got our own agenda. God starts leading us out of our plan, and we say, hang on, God. I ask you to lead me, but I need you to lead me according to my, by my ideas. God said, where were you when I formed the earth? Who did I seek counsel from, Job? I don't need your opinion, God said. I just need you to follow. James chapter 4, verse 13, I referred to it a moment ago. Here's what James said. Many will say, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such city and spend a year there. We will engage in business and we will make a profit. <laughs> James is dealing with people that don't recognize the time. What's he saying to them? First, you've got a plan. You're going to go today or tomorrow. We will go. It doesn't matter. I just want God to bless what I'm doing. Say that again, Pastor. I think I will. We would rather have God bless what we're doing than do what God is blessing. I'm going to tell you straight up, and if it don't apply to you, just pass it on by. But if you're trying to do something out of the will of God, you can pray till the cows come home, but they will not be a blessing on what you're doing because if God blessed your disobedience, you would think it was his will. Oh, come on, somebody. If God blessed everything that you put your hands to, you would think everything you did was good. God said, i got a plan, I've got a will, and I've got a time, and don't tell me what you're going to do today or tomorrow. That would help a lot of us not go in debt. Watch this. First, we're going. God, if you bless it, you bless it. If you don't, then I'll be back. Then we have a predetermined arrival point. A destination. I know where I'm going to go. Say, listen, I've had young people. I'm going to do this. When I turn 20, I'll be at this point in my life. When I turn 25, we'll have two kids. When I turn 30, I'll be moving toward retirement, and I'll have a brand new car, brand new truck. I'm going to have a, everything's going to flow just like I wanted to. Maybe God is saying to you, I'd rather have you to be a missionary in China as to have you walk around with all that you can get and be out of the will of God. Can I get a witness today? Today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city. I know where I'm going. Third, they plan a certain amount of time is going to be spent there. I'm only going to stay there one year. 
Soon my year's up, I'm getting out of there. But when I leave, I'm going to be happy and blessed. Listen to me very closely. It is about time. The time that you obey God and you walk in submission to God. And hear me, my friend, hear me well. If you want to have God's favor, then you must learn to obey him in the small things. Because if you cannot obey him in the little things, you are not ready for the big stuff. Fourth. The plan was, I'm going to engage in business, and I will carry out a plan of action, and today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, and I'm going to be so blessed. Everybody looks at me and says, wow. And God says, it's about time. Please understand, we think that success is measured by having more than our neighbor. Come on, somebody. Success is not about having the largest church in the community or region. Success is not about driving the nicest car. Success is not about having all of the fine details of life. Success is walking every moment in the plan of Almighty God. I'd rather walk in obedience than to walk in supposed blessing. Tell your neighbors about time. John chapter 2, it's a tremendous story when God began to speak this to my heart. It was amazing how he just began to unfold the fact that Jesus was alive for 30 years with a purpose. But let's back up a little before that because before he was walking in the flesh, he was God on the throne. God incarnate became flesh and my God, I'm about to shout. Outside of the flesh, he never knew time. Before creation, time did not exist. He set the plan of time in motion. He called the moon by night, the sun by day, and there became a cycle of time. But even then, in the cool of the day, he would walk into time and step back into eternity. Are you with me? Come on. He would step, uh, you see it throughout the Old Covenant. He steps down with Moses. He steps down with Abraham. He steps down throughout the Old Covenant, revealing the eternal to the temporary. Eternity, time. But then, in the fullness of time, my Lord, somebody ought to shout. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman. My Lord, somebody ought to be dancing right now. So God put a, he put a point in place. From eternity past, he called things out to be as they are. He looks at eternity from the future and says, I've already got it worked out. So that means God is standing in your tomorrow right now. My God in heaven, you ought to be shouting. God is going to work with you tomorrow and you ain't even got through Sunday yet. So this eternal God steps into temporary moments of time. Now, watch what happens. Jesus is alive for 30 years. 30 years he's he's confined by time. Everything is laid out in points. He does it at, at 12 He confounds the wisdom of the righteous leaders. It's not time. He's doing the Father's business, but it's not his time. My Lord, somebody help me. Now watch what happens. He goes to the wedding of Mary at at Cain of Galilee, and they've gone through the, the good wine, and now they've got nothing left but six pots of water. Oh, hallelujah. And when he sees the pots of water, he recognizes that this is not going to fix itself. His mama says, son, they need help. He said, it's not yet my time. But she pushes him. And says to them, whatever predicated on the idea that he was going to say something or do something, she knew she could get eternity working in the frame of time. So she says, whatever he says. 
Now, she does not know what he's going to say, but she knows if eternity speaks up, everything temporary has to cave to the power of the eternal. Are you shouting with me yet? So he turns the water to wine. It's not yet my time. The Bible says, and I, I can go through chapter and verse if that'll help you, that there came a point in the ministry of Christ in Luke chapter 2, God begins to bring the picture of Christ into the play. Watch this. Alexander the Great, one of the greatest leaders of his time, died at 33 years of age. He died with a sexually transmitted disease, and they put him in a glass casket and covered his body with honey and paraded him through his empire. I hate flies. That's all I'm saying. He had conquered the world. He had done everything you can possibly do. And yet, he had a lot of time. So he dies. Now understand, had he not come into play, the Greek language would have not been used to reach or speak the world's language. It became the English of their day. So when the word of God was translated in the new covenant, it was translated because of the work of Alexander. And he thought his purpose was to rule over the whole world. But his real purpose was not only to fulfill the word of God to Daniel, but his real purpose was to set the language in order for thus saith the Lord to be sent throughout the world. Three centuries later, a Roman by the name of Octavius comes into power. So impressive was this Roman Senate, they decided we're going to make him the world's ruler and they didn't like the title king so they chose the word Augustus, meaning the august one. Well, what about him? Where, where's he fit in this thing? I'm glad you asked. Because the Bible says, take it up in the book of Luke chapter 2. In the days when Caesar Augustus issued out a decree that all the nations should be taxed, that everybody went to their own country, and God used the word of Octavius now, everybody still with me right now, to direct the people of God back to their own country. So Joseph gets Mary and makes a 90-mile trip while she's expecting a child so that the scripture might be fulfilled that in the time when everything was ready, she gave birth to a son in Bethlehem. Are you still with me? Watch how God uses people that are wild, crazy, wicked, perverse to put things in order. That's why God's got you working where he has you working. Because God is using things to position you in the time. John chapter 7. They tried to seize him. They were unable to do so. That makes no sense. The Roman legion who marched through that land could have done anything they wanted had they been implored to do so. The reality is, it was not time. Something happens between John 7 and John chapter 14. Jesus recognizes things have turned. And he tells the disciples, go get things ready. My time, in John chapter 17, he says, my time has come. Everybody with me? What is God doing in my life? Why can't I feel God? Where's God at? I'm going to tell you where God is. God is standing in time, waiting on you to get in time with his plan so that all things can work together for good. But if you're over here frolicking around with the world, you'll miss the appointment of God. You'll never know the specific moment or the power or the glory or the victory or the purpose of your life because you'll never find it out of his time. He said in Mark 14, my hour has come. John chapter 17, Father, the time has come. Luke 22, but this is your hour, he says to the powers of darkness, when you have authority to reign. 
I'm going to tell you something. There is a opening in the hell's regions of every demonic spirit you can imagine because this is their hour and it's being unfolded in front of us today. He who now lets, will let. He who now hinders, will hinder until he's taken out of the way and then that wicked one is revealed. Why can't the devil come on the scene right now? Because it's not his So if it's not the devil's time, whose time is it? We call this in biblical terms the church age. And if it's the church age, let's not go out like a bunch of babies that are whipping and whining. Let's go out in a blaze of glory. Let's go out in revival. Let's go out in Pentecostal power. Let's go out in the fire of God. Let's go out the way we came in. To that I say it's about time. Romans 5, 6. When you were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Listen to me very closely. There are moments of time that you have lost. You will never get back. If God said to you, go and stand there in the altar at harvest until I say to go somewhere else, and you do anything but le less than that, you will miss your divine appointment. So the problem with most of us being what God wants us to be is not God because he stands in eternity past looking at eternity future and has already ordered every event that is coming down the pike. If I were to ask you this simple question, I guarantee everybody that's got a breath, heartbeat, would answer in the affirmative. Do you want God's best in your life? Shoot a hand up if that's you. Well, I just, I'm just praying. Your act of prayer without an act of obedience walking alongside of it, of it will cause you to miss your time. Obedience is the only thing that God uses to measure your time. Please understand that. I said obedience is the only thing God uses. It does not matter what your giftings are. It doesn't matter how talented you are. If you are not obedient in the little things, you will never become a ruler over much. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are seasons in our life where God takes us from point A to point B and he graduates us to different levels or different areas. But the reality is you're never going to be more blessed than you are in the moment of obedience. Maybe you're here right now and you're saying, God, I, I just need to know what your plan is for my life. Would you shoot a hand up that's you? How many want to know God's plan for your life? God, I wish you'd show me a mile down the road. He said, I can't because you won't walk in, in obedience <laughs> in the step you're in. So he takes you step by step, minute by minute, in time with him. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you've been blessed by today's message from Pastor Dwight Jones. Your viewership and support are essential in helping us spread the gospel across the nation and around the world. If you feel led to partner with us or want to find out more about Harvest Christian Center or Pastor Dwight Jones, you may do so by visiting reapnow.org slash TV. Be sure to find us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to us on YouTube. We look forward to connecting with you.